Our next principle is dominance, which means commanding, controlling, prevailing over all others, right? Big word, powerful word, and also a very powerful part of the principles of visual hierarchy, right? Signifying importance. Also of progressive disclosure, saying this is more important, do this first, then this, then this, then this. If you look at this photo, there is obviously a dominant element here. <laughs> okay, these funky looking shoes take up a significant portion of the screen real estate. They're big, they're bold, they're dominating the screen. Your eye cannot help but go back to them, even if you're trying to read the stuff below it. Now, at the same time, this is dominant as well, even though it's much smaller and takes up a lot less of the frame. Look at this photo. Can you stop yourself from looking at that camera in the center? <laughs> no, you can't. Why? Because it's surrounded by a ton of negative space. Even though that wood is something visual that we can perceive and see and look at, it's sort of the same. It's consistent. It's sort of a regular repeated pattern from left to right in the entire frame. But in the center, you've got this weird shape that doesn't conform to anything around it and is surrounded by similarity. Okay, It's an anomaly. Remember that word? This camera is an anomaly in this picture. So size does not matter. That's what I'm trying to hammer home here. How big something is does not necessarily signify its dominance. Dominance is not a matter of size. It's a matter of contrast. It's a matter of placement. It's a matter of appearance. All right, and we're going to dig into this. What's the first thing you see here? Where is your attention drawn? Pretty obvious, right? To that image on the right-hand side that has all the blue and the texture and all these overlapping lines. That's the area of most contrast. Even though it's the largest thing on the screen, it's also the most full. It's the most saturated. It's the most visually complex area of the screen. So you automatically go there. Dominance is achieved by emphasizing one or more visual elements. And this has got a lot going on there. There's a lot of intersecting lines. There's color in and out. There's areas of gray, there's areas of black, there's areas of white, okay? All those positive and negative shapes, all that interplay is creating dominance. There's so much complexity there that we can't help but look at it. This creates a focal point where most people will instinctively go at first glance. That dominance can create an entry point in the design. It's a starting point from which you lead the person to the other parts of the screen. Remember everything we've looked at up to now, especially uh, in the last example of the form. You are purposefully leading people from point A to point B on a screen. That's a big part of what dominance does. It shows us where to start. It screams, start here. <laughs> it's a lot like if you've ever seen a sign with a big red dot on it that says, you are here, right? When you're trying to navigate towards something, dominance does the same thing. It tells you where you are right now or where you should start. Dominance enables and directs the flow that we're talking about. So from a primary dominant element, from your starting point, design flow is achieved by creating elements with secondary and tertiary dominance. In other words, dominance decreases the more elements you add. And you do that in a purposeful way. You make sure that there's one leading element and you make sure that everything under it has a specific hierarchy from most important to least important. Dominance relies on contrast, clear differences in the visual field, which this layout has in spades, from the bright orange bar at the top to the image below it to the very crisp, clear black text with lots of negative space around it below. All those areas of contrast suggest differences. Now, in terms of the dominant element, you can't help but look at the very top and that image together. That's where the most color is. That's where the most activity, visual activity is on the screen. So your eye can't help but go there. That's dominance. So that gives you context. Here's the date of this article. You get the image that says, here's what this article is about. And then you go down to the headline, which sets your expectations as to what the content is about. By creating a dominant element like this, what you're doing is you're revealing what's most important in your design? What is going to immediately send a signal or get somebody's interest? What is this? What's it about? You're showing people where to look first. An overlay, a modal, right? A popover like this accomplishes the same thing. By darkening 
everything else in the background, your attention is immediately called to that middle box. That little circular illustration at the top, because it's a unique shape, it's, it's an anomaly, visual anomaly, there's that word again, from everything else, your eyes immediately drawn to it. And then we got a big, bold headline, beautiful spaces. Then we have some very calm gray text below it. And then we have a next button at the bottom. This goes, again, the flow goes from top to bottom, from most dominant element, which is that circle, to the least dominant element, towards the bottom. Your eye is led through this in a very purposeful way. And here's what I want you to notice. Again, that next, it's a button, but it's, it's more sort of a, a visual treatment that extends from left to right. Even though it's big, even though that's a big area of color, it is still not the most dominant element. Why? Because it has a lot less contrast than that circle up above it. And contrast is something you're going to hear a lot more about.